good morning friends in previous lecture we have discussed about open belt drive in today's lecture we are going to discuss about cross belt drive we are going to find out the length of belt for cross belt drive to understand the concept please do watch the video till end uh, on the screen the figure which you are seeing is a cross belt drive we are going to derive the length of the belt for cross belt drives it consists of larger pulley and smaller pulley and the radius of the larger pulley is denoted by r1 r2 is the radius of smaller pulley and l is the total length of the belt whatever the belt you are seeing on the entire cross section it is the total length of the belt and it is denoted by capital l l1 is the length of belt in contact with the larger pulley you can see point a and point d from point a to point d the belt is in contact with the larger pulley this length is nothing but the l1 L2 is the length of the belt in contact with the smaller pulley. Point C from point C to point B, the belt is in contact with the smaller pulley. This length of belt is called as L2. And L3 is the length of belt which is not in contact with either of larger pulley nor the smaller pulley. If you see point D to b this belt is not in contact with any of the pulley similarly from point a to point c the belt is not in contact with larger nor the smaller pulley this length the addition of this length is nothing but the l3 l3 is nothing but ac plus bd ac plus bd this is AC which is the length which is not in contact with any of the pulley. Similarly, BD is also not in contact with any of the pulley. That will give you the total length. Here I have given the uh, description about the various terms which I have talked now. Now, we need to find out the total length of the belt which is uh, which is on the cross belt drive to find out the total length you need to add all the length of the belt that is l1 length of belt in contact with larger pulley plus l2 length of belt in contact with smaller pulley plus l3 length of belt which is not in contact with either of the pulleys that is ac plus pd now first we need to find out l1 l2 and after that we can find out l3 when you are going to add all those things you will get the total length of the cross belt drive okay from the geometry which is shown in the figure if you see the figure in this c is nothing but the central distance between point o1 to o2 this is called as central distance from point a to point b you can see that two planes are there you need to know the angle of this plane okay all of you know that the angle between this is 180 degree or pi okay the angle between the two plane or from this to the a plane is alpha similarly from this plane to d is alpha i need to know the angle between d plane and a plane it is 180 plus alpha plus alpha it is 180 is nothing but pi pi plus 2 alpha similarly we'll find out the angle between plane that is point c and d that is this angle is pi or 180 degree plus you need to add alpha plus alpha therefore it is pi plus 2 alpha we don't know the length of this belt okay 
by using length of the arc formula we can calculate how you are going to calculate that therefore length is equal to angle multiplied by the radius from that you will get the length of the arc similarly in our case also i need to calculate this length of arc from point a to point d we know the angle the angle is pi plus 2 alpha multiplied by radius the radius is r1 r1 multiplied by pi plus 2r will give you the length of arc that is l1 therefore from the geometry l1 is equal to pi plus 2 alpha into r1 similarly we can calculate l2 we know the angle it is pi plus 2 alpha from length of arc to find out the length of this arc you need to multiply with angle multiplied by radius radius is r2 r2 multiplied by angle is pi plus 2 alpha from that you will get the length of the second belt which is in contact with a smaller pulley call this as equation 2 and 3 we know l1 and l2 next we need to calculate l3 to calculate l3 now to calculate l3 we have to find out ac and bd to find out ac and bt for that i need to draw a line o1p parallel to the belt from o1 and extend o2b till it meets o1p at point a i will show that in the figure to find out this ac as well as bd if you add that you will get the l3 to find out that what i am going to do is i am going to draw a line o1p such that it is parallel to bd i am going to draw a line o1p parallel to the belt from point o and i am going to extend this o2b I am going to extend the O to B till it meets the O1 P. Here it meets O1 P at this particular point. Now from the right triangle or oh sorry right angled triangle from the right angle triangle that is O1 O2 P. I am going to find out the value of o1 p once i going going once i am going to calculate the value of o1 p o1 p is nothing but it is equal to bd or db i can find out ac value first i need to calculate o1 p to calculate that o1 p i need to consider this right angled triangle o1 o2 p from the right angle triangle o1 o2 p in this case assume that we don't know the hypotenuse that is ac how you are going to calculate that ac value how you are going to calculate the ac value in this case we can calculate ac by pythagoras theorem pythagoras theorem is ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square we will be knowing ab and bc from that easily we can find out ac that i am going to apply for triangle o1 o2 p in this case from triangle o1 o2 p o1 o2 square is equal to o1 p square plus o2 p square it is o1 p square plus o2 p square is equal to o1 o2 square in this case i am going to take this o2 p square to the right hand side then it will be negative sign when you take this positive sign to the right hand side it will be negative now i am going to take this square to the right hand side so it will be 
root of this entire value okay in this case we don't know the value of o1 o2 o2 p if you substitute that then only you are going to get the value of o1 p o1 o2 is nothing but the center distance from the figure similarly o2 p is nothing but r1 plus r2 if you see the figure you can clearly understand how i have taken o1 o2 is equal to c and o2 p is equal to r1 plus r2 in this case you can see o1 o2 this is nothing but the center distance i have substituted o1 o2 is equal to c next i have substituted o2 p o2 p is equal to r1 plus r2 here you can see o2 p is nothing but o2 b plus b p o2 b is nothing but the radius it is r2 from o2 b is nothing but r2 here b p b p is nothing but you just extend here you can see the extended line b p is nothing but d o1 o1 d is nothing but radius of larger pulley it is r1 therefore o2 p is equal to r1 plus r2 this is how i have substituted r1 plus r2 now substitute the value o1 o2 as c o2 p as r1 plus r2 in the above equation now i am going to take c square as common when i am going to take c square as common here i need to divide it by c square when you take c square common remaining is 1 1 minus r1 by r2 divided by c square yes here i have taken c square outside means i have to divide it by c square that's why i have divided by c square okay now i am going to take out this root okay instead of root what i will do i will take it as 1 by 2 okay 2 into 1 by 2 means 2 2 will get cancelled remaining is c okay after that for this entire term i will take instead of writing root i have taken it as 1 by 2 call this as equation number 4 okay now i am going to expand the term expand expanding this term by binomial theorem and neglecting the higher power terms by expanding this term using binomial theorem and neglecting the higher power terms i am going to get this equation when you are going to expand this using binomial th theorem you are going to get it as 1 minus 1 by 2 r1 plus r2 by c whole square now i am going to substitute this in equation 4 substitute these value this term value in equation 4 i am going to substitute this term as 1 minus 1 by 2 r1 plus r2 by c whole square in equation 4 o1p from the figure you know that o1p is nothing but bd now we have calculated bd similarly you need to calculate ac okay and you will get the same value that's why there is no need of calculating directly you can write it as similarly ac is equal to same term and from the above equation you know that l3 is equal to l3 is equal to ac plus bd now you have calculated ac and bd substitute that in this equation therefore l3 is equal to ac plus bd substitute that it will be two times this value two times this value call this as equation number five now we have calculated l1 value from equation two we know l2 from equation three and we have calculated l3 now when you're going to add all these things you're going to get the value of l okay that's why in equation 2 from equation 2 you know the value of l1 you know the value of l2 substitute that in equation 1 therefore substituting equation 2 3 and 5 in equation 1 we get this is l1 this is l2 and this is l3 now 
multiply this r1 or take this r1 inside the bracket it will be r into pi plus 2 alpha into r1 plus take this r2 inside the bracket it will be r2 into pi plus r2 into 2 alpha take this 2c inside the bracket it will be 2c into 1 is 2c minus when you take this 2c inside 2 2 will get cancelled c will get get cancelled with this this is c square the remaining is c therefore it will be r1 plus r2 by c whole square r1 plus r2 square divided by c now in this equation here pi is common take pi outside remaining is r1 plus r2 similarly in this term 2 alpha is common take 2 alpha outside remaining is r1 plus r2 2 alpha into r1 plus r2 and these two terms will remain same call this as equation number 6 now in equation 6 we don't know the value of alpha we need to calculate the value of alpha then only we'll get the total length of the belt for that reason we don't we don't know the value of alpha we need to calculate the value of alpha from triangle o1 o2 p from triangle o1 o2 p this is angle alpha this i have taken it from the sketch here sine is nothing but opposite side divided by hypotenuse this is hypotenuse opposite side and this is adjacent sine alpha is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse sine alpha is equal to opposite side is p o2 divided by o1 o2 okay and we know that o2 p from uh, previous equation it is r1 plus r2 whereas c is equal to uh, o1 o2 is equal to c I have taken it from the above equations here we know the value of O1, O2 and O2, P. I am going to substitute that I have substituted that in this equation therefore I will get sin alpha is equal to R1 plus R2 by C for small angle of alpha sin alpha will become alpha now substitute sin alpha is equal to alpha in the above equation therefore alpha is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by c call this as equation 7 now substitute equation 7 in equation 6 substitute this alpha value in equation 6 now substituting the value of alpha in equation 6 we get I substitute the value of alpha here this is how the sixth equation will become now rearranging and simplifying the terms we are going to get the value of l here I am going to write 2c first plus pi r1 plus r2. This can be written as r1 plus r2 whole square divided by c. 2 times r1 plus r2 whole square divided by c. Minus, already I have written 2c here. Minus r1 plus r2 whole square divided by c. In this 2c plus pi r1 plus r2 plus 2 times r1 plus r2 whole square divided by c minus r1 plus r2 square by c it is nothing but r1 plus r2 whole square by c whatever the equation 8 we are getting it is nothing but the total length of the belt for cross section length of the belt for cross section belt drive this is the required equation the notes are provided in the description in the description i have provided a link from that you can download the notes thank you for watching